Hi everyone, my name is Nick and welcome to my channel Astro Exploring. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the Skywatcher 72ED DS Pro. I'll be going through the specifications, breaking down the telescope end to end, um, and I've also got an image that I've taken of the Andromeda Galaxy uh, to share with you at the end of the video. This is my first video on YouTube, so if you like what you see, please consider subscribing and hitting the thumbs up button, that would really help me out. So I bought this telescope from First Light Optics for £269, um, which does feel like a bit of a bargain in this hobby. Um, astrophotography is notoriously expensive. Um, this telescope sits right at the lower end of the of the price bracket, um, but that in no way means that this is a, a cheap telescope. Um, it is very, very good um, for the size. At this price point, uh, £269, it does only come in the aluminium case and the OTA itself. It doesn't actually have uh, any accessories uh, like eyepieces or star diagonals or uh, finder scopes or anything like that included. It's just the OTA. Okay, so first I want to talk to you about the aluminium carry case. So if you buy this from First Light Optics, and I believe from anywhere else, um, the telescope comes in this aluminium carry case. Um, it's got the two locking mechanisms there and it comes with a key so that you can actually lock these uh, and the carrying handle there, which is um, is very handy for, for safe storage, especially if you're, if you're traveling to star parties or, or things like that. Um, so let's open the box up, have a look inside. So what you're gonna see here is as it comes from the factory, just without all the all the wrapping that goes with it. Um, I've actually used this before, um, so I've got some accessories sitting in here, which I'll talk about in a bit more detail later. Um, so the OTA sits in there nice and comfortably. Um, it is worth noting that um, in order for it to fit in the box, you do have to move the tube rings around so that it fits within these slots, um, which isn't a problem for me. Um, I've been sitting this telescope on top of the Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro mount. Um, and as this is a very lightweight telescope, um, even with the camera on the end and just, just one of the counterweights on the HEQ5 mount, um, I've found that I need to have the dovetail bar all the way to this end um, just to try and balance the weight and it's still doesn't quite balance fully, um, but it's sort of, I'd say about 95% there. So I, I'm happy with that for now until I can add a bit more weight um, to it. If you had um, a guide scope and a guide camera on top or something like that, um, that would balance the weight out quite nicely. Um, I don't have that at the moment though, so I do struggle with, with my balance a little bit. So you can see that the carry case itself has got um, various slots in here. It's got a slot for the, for the OTA. Um, I keep the field flattener and some uh, adapters in this part. Normally I have some bubble wrap around all these just to keep them nice and secure. When you first um, open up the box, you'll have a set of keys um, in one of these slots somewhere. I think mine, mine were in, in this slot here, but that's just so that you can lock the case should you, should you want to for, for traveling or something like that. Um, and then you've got various other holes here for um, eyepieces, star diagonals, something something like that. Um, and you can see the OTA is actually very snug in there. Um, it's lined with cardboard on the outside and then all of this um, sort of foam around it, which gives it a really nice, tight, secure fit. Um, and when you close the box, um, you can see that the top of the um, the top of the case actually just press down onto the telescope slightly um, just to give it a nice secure fit inside. So let's go ahead and take the telescope out. Okay, so here we have the Skywatcher 72 ED DS Pro OTA. So it has a 72 mil objective and a focal length of 420 mil. Um, the actual overall length of the telescope is 42 centimeters from this end to this end. Um, so you can see it's really compact, really lightweight, um, and which is one of the reasons why I, I have struggled with, with balance on the HEQ5, simply because um, 
of the length and also the weight. This weighs just under uh, two kilograms. It's about 1.95 kilos. Um, so it's really lightweight, which is great. Uh, if like me, you like to try and um, get out in the field a bit and, and uh, take your kit um, somewhere else other than just the back garden. Uh, a bit more difficult with the, with the bigger and heavier telescopes. With a focal length of, of, of 420, you're gonna have a really nice wide field of view, um, which, is, which is great for beginners like myself because it's a little bit more forgiving um, when you're trying to frame up a target. Um, so I was taking photographs of Andromeda the other night um, and I'd actually got my alignment um, pretty spot on. Um, Andromeda wasn't quite in the centre of, of view, so I had to just make some small adjustments um, to the mount to, to centre. With this telescope, that's really easy because you've got a nice wide field of view. Um, if you've got something like the ATED or the, the 120 especially, um, you're really going to sort of struggle more with that. So I'll go through the telescope from um, sort of objective end all the way to the, to the focus end. Um, so I'll start. I'll start at the top here. So um, the dew shield it itself, so this actually has a screw cap um, rather than just a push cap, um, which I find on other telescopes can actually um, be prone to falling off. So it's nice nice to have a, a screw cap. Um, it's quite a fine thread. So if like me, you've got sausage fingers, then um, you might struggle, especially in the dark, <laughs> you might struggle to, to get that back on. Um, but here it is, it is pretty, it is pretty easy um, now that I've gotten used to it. Um, and it's also metal, which is great, not, not just plastic. Um, and then the tube shield itself actually just slides off very easily. Like so. So that's great for cleaning the glass. Um, to be able to remove that, you can just get to the glass much easier, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Um, the inside of the um, of the, the, the dew cover itself um, is actually matte black. Uh, I don't know if you can see that that well there, um, but the fact that that's matte black it just prevents reflections um, coming back into the into the telescope while you're while you're imaging. Um, so that's so that's really good. I'll just pop that to the side for a second, um, just so that you can see the uh, the glass there. Um, now the glass itself, um, I'll just pop this uh, dew cover back on so you can see how easy it is, just like that. So the glass itself, um, Skywatcher have been a little bit sketchy on the details for the glass. Bigger versions of this telescope in the EVO star range, so the, the ATD, 100, 120ED, they all use the FPL 53 glass. Um, Skywatcher haven't actually released the specifications for the glass in the 72 ED. There are rumours that the glass is FPL 53. However, in my mind, if if it was FPL 53, I don't see why they wouldn't just release that information. I don't know why that would be such a big secret, seeing as that you know that they use it on all of their other Evo Star telescopes. Um, so we're not sure what it is. Um, however, I can say that the the little time that I've had with it, um, I've only had this for a, for a couple of weeks um, because of clouds. I've only been able to use it uh, once actually. Um, it did achieve uh, pinpoint stars, uh, and I say, as I said, I'll, I'll share my image of Andromeda with you at the end, um, so that you can you can see what this is capable of with with just a beginner's knowledge like myself. Okay, so moving down to the um, the sort of middle part of the telescope, if you like. Um, I just wanted to talk about the, the, the paint job. So this has got the, um, the sort of diamond black uh, paint on it that, that Skywatcher have been using on their range. And then it has the, the green dovetail bar to go with it. And I've also got the Skywatcher Star Adventurer, which has it's got the same um, color pattern and it seems to be what Skywatcher are sticking with now. Uh, and I really like it because it means that everything matches. Um, Unfortunately, my HEQ5 is one of the older versions, so it doesn't have the uh, the, the green detail on the mount. Um, so the tube rings, um, these are um, aluminium tube rings, as you'd expect. Uh, they just unscrew like so. They slide backwards and forwards for, uh, fairly easily. Oh, I just need to do it a bit more with the dovetail bar, just so that you can uh, either 
move it to get it into the correct position to get it back in the box or if you're trying to balance your telescope um, it's really easy to move those about. There are actually felt lines underneath so you can't damage the telescope um, by doing this um, which is really nice. Underneath that you've got the dovetail bar. Um, it's a 45 mil dovetail bar. Um, it will fit on any um, scavenger mount so I use it on the HEQ5 uh, and also the scavenger star adventurer. It's um, a perfect fit especially Especially for the Star Adventurer, if you're if you're looking to get into astrophotography, and I'll put this um, detail in, in another video, um, so so keep a look out for that. Um, this telescope on the Star Adventurer is absolutely perfect. Okay, so I'll just turn this around so that you can see it better. Um, on this side, you've got a Vixen style um, finder shoe, um, so you can put a finder scope in there, connect an auto guide camera um, to it. Um, I don't have an autoguide camera yet, um, but hopefully in a few months I'll be able to invest in one of those. Um, but that's just a standard, um, a standard fit, so you won't have any problems just using that existing um, plate there. So moving on to the end, you've got the, the focus tube. So this is a Crayford style focus tube, it's dual speed, and it's got 38mm of travel in total. So you can see there's, there's two knobs. There's the, the grey knobs on either side here. The black one on this side is more of a fine tune focuser. So if you're trying to focus on a, on a target, um, not quite in focus, but you're pretty close, you can use, you can use that. Um, that will move your focus tube much, much more slowly, um, just to give a, a be better accuracy really for when you're, when you're close. And also underneath, there is a thumb screw, um, so you can actually lock the, draw, the, the focus tube into place for when you're imaging. And uh, just if you think you've got a DSLR camera on the back of on the back of here with the field flattener as well, um, so it's nice that you can lock that into place. Um, I didn't actually know that on the first night, um, and I didn't lock it into place, and I didn't actually get any slipping. On that, um, maybe that's just because it's brand new. Uh, maybe if you know if it was a couple of years old, perhaps that would start happening. I'm not sure, but I certainly didn't experience that on on my first night of imaging. And I just want to say how smooth the motion is for drawing that in and out. It is really smooth, and it works really, really well. It's a really, really quality bit of, of kit. That um, so that is end to end of the 72ED. What I'll do now is I'll just talk about some of the accessories that you'll need to buy in order to be able to attach a DSLR camera. Okay, so if you want to use this telescope for imaging, there's a couple of accessories that you'll need to purchase in order to achieve focus. Um, first of all, you'll need the field flattener. The one I have is the, the Skywatcher 0.85 uh, field flattener reducer and this is actually the one for the Skywatcher ED80 as you can see there but um, First Light Optics have actually had an adapter made which makes it fit into the 72 ED so if you're on the First Light Optics website and I'll link this in the description below um, if you, if you don't buy the version that is for the 72ED on the First Light Optics website, then it won't come with this adapter as standard, which is what you'll need, because otherwise it won't fit. So the flattener reducer that I have here is um, £175, I believe. And it comes with, excuse me, comes with two caps on the end. which I keep throwing about everywhere. And they're both screw caps, um, so that's really nice. And if I just, you'll need to take off the um, piece on the end here that you would that you would normally fit your, your eyepieces to for, the, for in, order, in order for this to fit. So if I just unscrew that. Now, I like to put this back on at the end of an imaging session for two reasons. One, it's got a cap on the end to stop, stop dust going back in. Uh, and also, 
the telescope won't actually fit back in the box if you've got the uh, accessories attached on the end there. Um, so I like to remove those at the end of a session and just um, just attach that back there. It's just a screw thread. Um, so I'll pop that to one side. So yeah, the reducer flattener as it is here won't fit onto the, um, the 72 easy. So you need this adapter here and screw that onto the end like so. The field flattener then fits into the 72 ED. So now that I've got the field flattener attached, you'll also then need an adapter to attach your DSLR camera. So you'll need to buy the adapter which fits your type of camera. I use a Canon DSLR. So this is the Canon M48 adapter um, which I bought from First Light Optics again. Um, this was £17, so um, not very expensive at all, and it's got a real quality feel to it, actually. Um, screw that. I would then attach my camera to there, and and that's it. That's the that's the scope um, set up for imaging. The reason that you need this is to be able to achieve focus. So with the with the focus tube, it's got 38 mil of travel. You can't the, the space between the the, uh, the the camera and the telescope needs to be a minimum of 55 mil. So adding these accessories gives you that spacing. And without the accessories, if I if I was just to put this adapter um, or or a similar adapter straight into the telescope there wouldn't be enough inward travel on the focuser for it to be able to fit, uh, to, to focus. So by having these attachments on the ends, you can, you can actually achieve focus. I think mine was probably around, around there, but it gave you plenty of, of room to play with in terms of being able to focus. And that was everything I wanted to talk about. That was my overview of the Skywatcher Evo Star 72 ED DS Pro. Um, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. I've got lots more videos to come. This was my first video. Um, so any feedback that you've got for me uh, would be much appreciated. So thanks for watching.